Okay, welcome back. I think we got cut a little bit short on that last video. I sort of was rushing it to to beat our time limit. So I think we got to number six, where nitric acid, one of our six strong acids, when it's placed in water, the water takes a proton away from the nitric acid, so it becomes H3O plus, and the nitrate is is left alone. The abbreviated way is getting rid of water. Um, oops, sorry, didn't mean to cross that one out. We'll get rid of water on both sides, and so this just becomes H+. Plus. So we can write this HNO3 makes H+, plus and NO3 negative. Now you need to remember the six strong acids. They are perchloric acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrobromic acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. Now these six acids are the only strong acids all others are weak. Now I need to amend that just a tiny bit. There is another strong acid, but we usually don't include it because it oxidizes so easily. But chloric acid is also considered to be a strong acid, but it oxidizes pretty quickly to perchloric. So we oftentimes don't include it in our list. Now, um, the other acids don't dissociate 100% of the time, so you'll notice the arrows going both ways, which means we reach an equilibrium. That was the unit we just finished, wasn't it? So the acetic acid molecule here can lose a proton to water, and water can become H3O+, and of course we can make the acetate ion, but um, the water can, or excuse me, the, the H3O+, can lose its proton to the acetate and turn back into water and acetic acid, so it reaches an equilibrium. Now for the forward reaction, the acid is acetic acid, And the base would be water, because you notice that water is gaining a proton during the process. Uh, for the backwards reaction, though, we're going to flip things around. The H3O plus, the hydronium ion, loses the proton. And the base is the acetate ion, which will gain the proton. So we could say the acetate ion. That's the C2H3O2 negative ion. Now once again, we oftentimes get rid of water from both sides, so we normally write it in the abbreviated form. I'm going to talk a little bit about pH here. We're going to spend some time reviewing um, how to do a few pH problems. You can have several of these on an upcoming assignment, so pay close attention. Now if you remember, um, when we did this demo testing whether or not water was electro an electrolyte, it did conduct a little bit of electricity. Not very much, but a little bit. Therefore, there must be some ions dissolved in pure water. Well, if it's pure water, what could those ions be? This isn't tap water, this is pure distilled water. So what could be the ions causing the conduction of a tiny amount of electricity? Well, it turns out that water dissociates a little bit into hydronium, H plus ions, and hydroxide ions. Now you see the arrow going both ways here, meaning it reaches an equilibrium. In reality, we abbreviate, this is the abbreviated form, it's water and water. <laughs> and one water molecule takes the proton from another water molecule, forming the H3O plus or hydronium ion, leaving me with a hydroxide. So this does happen a little bit. Um, the equilibrium constant for this is pretty small. The equilibrium expression for this reaction would be H plus times OH minus. You'll notice that the liquid water is left out because water is a liquid. We don't include liquids in our equilibrium expression. So we write it as H plus times OH minus or we could write it as H3O plus times OH minus. Either version is fine. I prefer the H plus. It's a little bit easier to write. Now it turns out that the concentration of these two things, as you would expect in water, is very low. It's 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. That's why just a little bit of electricity was conducted when we did that demo, because very few ions were present. So the equilibrium constant for water would be the H plus concentration in pure water, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th times the OH minus concentration in water, which is also 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. 
And so the kW is just the product of those two, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Now in any water solutions, in any water solution, the product of these two will always be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Um, that doesn't make a difference if it's an acid or a basic solution. The product of the two will always be the same number. So that means if I know one of these two concentrations, I can calculate the one that's missing. And that's what we're going to practice first. So if I tell you the H plus concentration in a water sample, we should be able to calculate the hydroxide concentration using this equation here. So if I want to solve for the hydroxide concentration, that would equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the H plus concentration, which in this case is 3.68 times 10 to the negative fifth. So let's see what that turns out to be. We'll pull out our calculator and we'll plug these numbers in. So 1 second EE negative 14 divided by 3.68 second EE negative 5 and we'll hit enter here and we end up with 2.7 times 10 to the negative tenth moles per liter. So if you know either the hydronium or hydroxide ion concentration the other one can be calculated pretty quickly because that number never changes. Remember the only thing that can change the equilibrium constant is temperature and these are this is the value at 25 degrees Celsius so we will call that a constant it won't change. Uh, number five is a is sort of a fun problem. Um, I think I'm going to leave number five alone for right now. I want to do some other work for you first and we'll come back to this one um, at a later point in time. Alright, let's now talk about the concept of pH. Now the definition of pH is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. You probably have heard of pH, we use it a lot. Um, you can measure the pH of shampoo. I've heard that before. Uh, if you have a swimming pool in your backyard, you measure the pH of the pool water. There's also something called pOH, and that's the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Now, just a quick, quick math review here. Remember what a log is? For instance, if I have uh, 100, doesn't that equal 10 squared? Well, the log is simply the power of 10. So the log of 100, or 10 squared, is equal to 2. What would the log of 0 0.001 be? Well, isn't that 10 to the negative third? So the log of that number would be negative 3. So the log is simply a power of 10 that expresses that number. Now, the pH is the negative of the log of the hydronium ion concentration. And the pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. So if I wanted the negative log of 10 squared, the negative log of that would be negative 2. If I wanted the negative log of 10 to the negative third, the negative log of that would be 3. Okay? Now, in pure water, what do you think the pH would be? Well, we want to take the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. So we're going to take the negative log of, do you remember the hydronium ion concentration of pure water? If you don't, flip back a page. We just talked about it. In pure water, the hydronium ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. So, 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. Now, of course, the log of that is going to be negative 7, but the negative of that would be 7. So the pH of pure water is 7. Now, the pOH would be the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And in pure water, once again, the hydroxide concentration is also 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. In pure water, these two are equal, kiddos. So if 1 is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, in pure water, the other one is 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Now the log of 10 to the negative 7, of course, is 7. We want the negative of that log. So the pOH of pure water 
is also 7. We end up um, with the pH and pOH of pure water both being 7. If you add these together, you get 14. In fact, the sum of pH and pOH in pure water is 14, but it's true for any water solution. So for instance, if I had a solution whose pH was 3.5, the pOH must be, think about it, how does 10.5 sound? So if you know 1, the difference between it and 14 will be the, will be the other. So that will also be helpful on your homework tonight. Now there's a diagram similar to this in your textbook. It shows the pH of some acidic solutions and some common basic solutions. So for instance, uh, stomach acid has a pH just below 2. Cola drinks have a pH between 2 and 3. Oranges between 3 and 4, etc. Blood has a pH of about 7.2 or 7.3. Household ammonia has a pH of about 11.5. So you'll notice that things that are basic have a high pH. Things that are acidic have a low pH. And that's a common problem with students. Students think that the higher the pH, the more acidic something is, when in fact it's the opposite. As pH increases, the basicity of the solution increases, and the acidity decreases. Now let's work a couple of problems here. What is the pH of this solution whose hydronium ion concentration is 6.81 times 10 to the negative fourth? So we want to take the negative log of the H plus concentration, which is 6.81 times 10 to the negative fourth. So we'll pull out our calculators again, and we'll press the negative log button and then we'll hit 6.81 second EE negative 4 and we end up with a pH of 3.17 not sure if you can see that on the video so the pH would be 3.17 we simply take the negative log by the way uh, did we know the pH would be between 3 and 4 because we have 6.81 times 10 to the negative fourth so the log of that number is somewhere around negative 4. So the negative of that log is somewhere around 4. It will be a bit lower than that because this number here is bigger than 1. So it's going to be between 3 and 4. Let's try to do another one here. What if I give you the pH? How do we find the hydronium ion concentration? Well, let's just simply 10 to the negative pH. So the H plus concentration would be 10 to the negative 5.93. Now that's pretty simply, that's pretty simple to enter that in your calculator. You'll hit 10, then your caret key, and then negative 5.93. And that gives us a hydronium ion concentration of 1.17 times 10 to the negative sixth. Okay. Not sure if we'll have time to do this both ways, but we're going to do it one way for sure. What is the pH of a solution whose hydroxide concentration is 8.04 times 10 to the negative third? Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's first find the pOH. Wouldn't that be the negative log of 8.04 times 10 to the negative third? So I claim the pOH is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. Let's plug it in and see what it is. Negative log, and we have 8.04, second EE, negative 3, enter. It looks like it's 2.09. So that would be 2.09. Now that's not my answer. That's the pOH. Remember, pH and pOH always equal 14. So, if the pOH is 2.09, 14 minus 2.09 will give me the pH. So, 14 minus 2.09, we're going to go with 11.91, and that's the answer I'm after there. Okay? Well, maybe we'll save method 2 for the next part of your video. Maybe we can recap it. So, once again, 
pH is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration and pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. The sum of the two will always be equal to 14. A low pH, kiddos, is acidic. And the higher the pH, the more basic it is. Please don't forget that. If you want to find the pH of a solution and you know the hydronium ion concentration, simply take the negative log of that number. Um, if you know the pH and you want to find the hydronium ion concentration, it's simply 10 to the negative pH. And then finally, if I give you the hydroxide ion concentration, we can first find the pOH, subtract that from 14, and then we have our pH. Okay, that's probably good enough for part two. Pick up with part three shortly. Thanks.